And at the time when the creators of the world called forth diverse beasts across the great isthmuses and into Encormithia, no mortal could foresee what was to happen. It is for this reason that these beasts were henceforth called unforeseen beasts, for the creators had made their arrival upon Encormithia unforeseen. And when an unforeseen beast took up residence in a new region, it happened in the following manner. Each beast sought out those environments which suited its preferences. For example, the forest and river areas around the kingdoms of Thazro and Nenum became prime locations for those monsters with a predilection for roots that grow at the edges of rivers, such as the carnivalesque otter, who possesses sharp claws, builds formidable embankments, and forages for both food and objects of ornamental value. In a like manner, the six-footed river monster is drawn to the favorable opportunities of the rivers and forests. Moreover, it takes full advantage of the many fens and morasses that intersperse the forest, river, and tributary areas. Here it employs the fens as a zone's ideal for ambushing the various four-legged prey that pass by. It is opportunistic in keeping a low profile amid snarly bushes for long periods of time. Of course, these tactics are not lost to the ever-observant grasping owl. The grasping owl, for its own part, has its most notable characteristic is collecting widely disparate objects in hoard and hoarding them in hidden holes, nests, and hollowed-out trees. And for some unknown reason, the bird seems to take interest in possessing those objects which are precious and valuable in the sight of others. It takes such objects and properly conceals them.